Good morning. North Carolina, throw your hands up. No, come on and raise up. Is that how it goes? Take your shirt off. Uh, 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 twist around your head. Like Spin a it like a helicopter. Yeah, that's an old song. Well, hello then, North Carolina. If all the songs I come up with, you like, oh, that's an old song. Um, you're stuck in the 80s. I like 90s music. Anyways, all right, so today we're going to talk to you about when it's time to throw in the towel. When should Ooh. you be a quitter? You should pull that a little closer to you. Uh, let me pull up my laptop. There's a particular person we want to talk to you. And hey, this is not to call you out, but this is a common question I think that uh, I think every business owner is going to ask themselves at some point because the business is hard and you don't know when that peak is going to hit. You don't know when you're going to have that breakout year. You don't know when things are going to turn around. And so the idea of quitting is definitely on the forefront of most people's minds when they're running a business. And I think that we saw a post where someone said, I've been in the business for a while and uh, I'm at a standstill. So you're feeling stuck and feeling like, hey, I don't know when it's, when it, I want to quit. I wanna, I'm thinking about throwing in the tile. Did I say <clears> that right? No, you tile. did not. Tile. See what I told you guys? Say it again. Throwing in the... <clears throat> towel. <laughs> towel, like T-A-O? Mm-mm. The towel? Tile. Tile. Tile is T-I-L-E. That's tile. what your feet are on. Towel. Towel. There you go. Towel. <laughs> no! It's towel. early in the morning and, and my, my it doesn't tongue matter is what not... Time yeah. of the morning. It does. It, is. it, no, it does. doesn't. Even it does. Lala knows. She's like, Tile, here we go again. Okay. Lala, are you making fun of me? I just need to know. She's not. I, so, you know, <laughs> to Towel. To wow. How well are you, Towel? Sorry. Um, maybe I should just quit talking. Maybe that's that's no, what I know. Going. So this, you know. So I think, and so when you think about that, I think that um, I think that's legitimate. I think that's a reasonable thing to ask yourself. <clears throat> and I think that one of the things that we could probably shed some light on is when is it time to quit? When is it time to just stop and then like in this continue this whole process? So I want to first tell you that uh, we associate as women in particular, we associate all of this unnecessary meaning and we attach it to our businesses yeah. right and so you say things like this is my baby and I've worked so hard I put my blood sweat and tears to this here's the thing children will never not be your babies they will never go away you'll yeah. never stop caring but your business is not your child you didn't give birth to it it was an idea based on a season in your life that you had an idea to bring to life yeah. based on what you were enjoying, what things were your passions, what uh, where you were at that season in your life, okay? And if mm -hmm. you know Eddie and I, you know we're super big into growth and not staying stuck. And yeah. so there are seasons of your life where it sounds like a really great idea to open a business. There may be a season a couple years in where you're like, it's a really good idea for me to learn more about business because I don't necessarily know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. And then maybe you take a season to learn more about business and then maybe the next season is to go back and apply what it is that you've learned. And then at that point, if you have children, if you're married, things could change. Hey, my marriage isn't working out. Um, hey, my children are getting older or I just had a baby and now the seasons are changing and so my desires, the things that make me happy, uh, the things that bring me joy, those things should change. There's always a changing season, right? right? So I guess what I'm saying is, is like some of you are opening these bakeries and attaching all of these like, this is gonna be it. If I close this business or if I don't make it in this business, that means I'm a failure. Right. And I will tell you, it doesn't mean that you're a failure. It means that maybe it's not something you should do anymore. Maybe it's not something you enjoy anymore. Maybe it's not something you want to do anymore. But also, maybe you just don't have the right tools. Maybe you don't know what to do to fix it. And that can be extremely frustrating, right? Yeah. So it's kind of the equivalent of when someone's trying to lose weight and they say, they throw up their hands and they go, I've tried it all. I've done it all and nothing works. Is that true? It's not. It's not true. Yeah. You haven't tried 
every single diet. You know why? Because that's science. Like, yeah. if you consume less calories than you eat and you exert a certain amount of energy, you will lose weight. Mm. It's science. It's not... You can't You can't put a timetable on it. Like, right. it may take... Somebody it may take six months. Somebody it may take a year to get to where they mm. want to go because everybody's body's different. But the process doesn't change. And I right. think that when you think about when you throw in the towel... I think that the most important thing you have to think about and you have to ask yourself is, is am I tying how I feel to a result? Obviously you are, but if the result was to change, would I still want to do this? So for example, if your business, uh, the person who wrote this, she said, I'm so tired, I'm at a standstill, I've been in business for seven years now and I can't seem to get ahead, thinking I need to throw in the towel. What Eddie's saying is if your circumstances were different, if your business was thriving, if your profitability was there, if you were seeing a return on all of your investment of time, energy, and sacrifice, would you still be asking yourself if you should throw in the towel? Right. And we can't answer that, right? <clears throat> that's a question that you have to answer for yourself. But if that's the case, if you sit back and you say, well, yeah, <laughs> if I was making the money that I needed to make to have the life that I wanted to have, and then I was able to get my time back because I was able to hire people and I was able to do all these things that I would enjoy this business, then that is the goal. And you, if you're still passionate about it, then you should still do it. You just need the right tools. You just need the right understanding because so often we allow our results to dictate how we think our and happiness. feel. Yeah, and how we feel when we can't tie it because sometimes we can't control the result. All mm -hmm. we can control is what we do and to get the outcomes that we want. Yeah. But we can't necessarily tie our happiness to that. It's almost like when people say, oh, my environment affects how I think and feel. Until you realize that your thoughts and You're your feelings... You're letting your environment... Right, like, but you, until you fi realize your thoughts and your feelings <clears throat> affect how you see the environment. Right? So how th that is all what th that matters. And so I think that you have to look at it and say, how do I feel about this? How do I think about this? And what do I really, really want? Yep. Yeah. Um, and there's so many different avenues we can go down this and I think we've all been there, right? I remember when I opened the bakery, I didn't have all of the necessary uh, capital. <laughs> I didn't have all the money that I needed to start my business, which is why I'm so passionate now about slow down. Yeah. It's okay. Like you literally will be okay if you wait, hold off because if you take action too soon, you're going to put yourself in a situation that can be extremely painful. And I know because I was there, right? So here I opened the business. We get through the first few months and then it's summer. And no one told me that <laughs> paying attention to the demographics in my community would be extremely helpful to forecast the ebbs and flows of my business. And so when the summer hit, even though I knew that we were heavily populated with educators and kids and there were tons of schools around me, I didn't know that when these people are not going to work, they go out of town. So like my city is a ghost town. And right. so I remember going across the street and talking to one of the businesses that had been there for like 35 years and just saying like, what's happening? Where is everyone? Like I'm two seconds from going out of business. And he goes, oh honey, don't freak out. It's like this every summer. Every summer your business is going to decline about 50 to 60%. And I was like, I, I, I didn't get that message. I didn't get that memo. And I can't, I won't make it through the summer. Like I'm going to go out of business right now if I don't find a way to make some sales. And so from that moment on, because I didn't have the luxury of just sitting back and because I knew that I was going to make it successful regardless, because... Facts tell me people celebrate birthdays in in the summer months. They can't all be out of town. Right. Is that true? This guy said everyone goes out of town. Is that true? No. No. That's the language he chose. That's the, that's the reality he chose to believe. Right. right. And yes, the sales do decline, but could I find a way to not let that put me out of business? Right. And the answer was yes. Right. So here we are getting ready to celebrate nine years in our location, ten over ten years in business, because I find a way. That's just what I do because I'm scrappy, because I came from nothing, because I didn't have anything, and because it meant the world to me to push forward and to find a way. And so also you, you know that you haven't tried everything to find the success that you're looking for. And my thing was I will try everything before yeah. I throw in the towel, right? And can you ever really try everything? The answer is no, no. right? <laughs> 
but I can hit it hard with the knowledge I have. I can get business books and learn more. I can learn more about marketing and sales and different strategies and techniques, which is exactly what I did. And you know what's crazy? Can I just add to that? And even if you have said, oh, I've tried everything, the crazy thing is, and we mentioned this on another live, you never step in the same river twice, right? So when when you, when Janelle says, like, I, I have business books, I have seminars, all these different things. Look. When you, when you accumulate that knowledge and you go and do the same thing that you tried before, so maybe you went out to your community, maybe you did something, you talked to certain people, maybe how you interacted with customers, you bring forth that knowledge, all of a sudden you get a different outcome because you are different. Your skill set is different. Your ability to tar articulate your business, your ability to persuade and influence people is different. The way you walk is different. The yeah. way you think about the situation is different. So I, so often I read some of the comments and they go, I'm trying everything. I've tried that already. And I go, but you tried it, it, but have you tried work. it? Have you been changed and then tried the same thing again? Right. Because then that changes the outcome as well. Right. So this is important to read. So uh, Melina Albert says, we tend to look at other people's success through social media and think that we are not successful enough. It makes people want to throw in the towel. We got to ask ourselves, are we going as hard as they are? Also, will we share? Um, also, we will share the success. We won't share, the um, struggle. but most won't share the struggle. Oh, so, don't believe everything you see. This is where staying in your own lane comes in handy. Focus on your business, your success, and go hard. Here's the thing: going hard means different things for different people. I have a um, uh, a student. I don't know if she's on here. Brittany McDonald. She's got like five or six children. So going hard for her looks different for me because yeah. my kids are teenagers and they're more independent now. But going hard for me when my kids were four, six, and eight, that hurt my heart. I didn't necessarily want to go hard all of the time because I wanted to be a mom. I didn't have kids um, as like an accident. Like I wanted to be there for them. Right. Some people struggle hardcore with mommy guilt, right? So I have tips because I've been through that. Also, looking at other people's success is such a lie because um, I've had several of you reach out to me during this open cart of Passion and Profit saying like, you know, these are my struggles. And then I go, yeah, I've been through that, right? So Rhonda Putasek, um, Putacek, I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but I say Putasek. So Rhonda's one of our students and she shared in Cake Sense yesterday, like, you know, when I met Janelle, <clears throat> when I came across Janelle, I was at a really low point. I had been uh, served an eviction notice mm. while we were closed under the door I and I felt like no one understood. And so here I'd sit there, I would listen to her lives and I'd be like, but she doesn't understand what I've been through. Mm. And so Rhonda said, you know, I kept talking, it was through the launch and she finally said, I can't afford to stay stuck and like sit here. So I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then she said, uh, I got a huge egg on my face when I realized that Janelle indeed went through the exact same thing. I was like, yeah, bitch. And they served the notice on my birthday. <laughs> on Happy my birthday. birthday. Yeah. They slid it under my door in my business and they served me an eviction notice with 30 days to get out. We built a $150,000 bakery. I don't know if you did that, Rhonda. Just kidding, I love her. But some of you think that your pain is something only you understand. Yeah. And you get so caught up in the story and this belief mm. and like no one gets it. And then mm. that's how you build resentment and anger and animosity. And now you hate the baking industry. And you hate social media because people are putting up fake stuff. And you hate that everyone else is succeeding because you've tried everything. And I'm here to tell you it's bullshit. And you know what's it's so... It's a lie. It's so funny because we want to be enough. Like we want to, to like be enough. And so what ends up happening is we our business is struggling and we have to create a reality that takes us out of it, that's, that preserves our ego. So we'll say things like, well, people in our area don't spend this kind of money. BS. I posted and about then, that yesterday. Then, or, There's another YouTube video for you to watch on people in my neighborhood can't afford my products. Right. It's a lie. And then, and then we'll say, oh, well, in my area, you know, there's not a lot of people, you know, it looks like the strategies that only work in high concentrated areas and say, well, we, you're being, we're being so creative to create this reality that preserves our ego to say, hey, you know what? Maybe we're not good enough right now. Right. So wait, I got to touch on that because you said most, and I will tell you, most bakers 
say, well, you don't understand in my area, people can't afford that. Let me tell you something. Eddie and I are from the hood, <laughs> different hoods, but the hood nonetheless. I went to school with people that wore the best clothes. Like I had major FOMO and I remember how hard now being a mother of teenagers that that must have been for my mom because she was doing the best she could at some points as a single mom. Right. And I was like, but the kids down the street like will make fun of me if I have on shoes from Payless. And the kids down the street, and the thing is, is I think we might have been a little bit more well off than yeah. some of those kids. But they had the most epic Michael Jordan $200 yeah. tennis shoes. They had full faces of makeup in junior high school. And we couldn't afford to get me a Maybelline mascara. Mm -hmm. Like, the, it's just a lie, right? So you understand this when you get older that people in lower income neighborhoods, they're the first ones to determine, oh, we're going to get that. I want that handbag. Right. I want to go there. I want to eat this. So don't try to tell me that where you live dictates, like people will find value in whatever it is that they want to spend their money on. Yeah. And by I any think, means necessary. And, and you are better suited at telling yourself, I just haven't figured it out yet. Yes. And instead of saying, I figured it out, but it just won't work. And, and Megan, and <laughs> Megan's on here right now. I wanted to touch on the lower income thing because Megan lives, uh, Megan Leal lives in, she calls the poorest city in all of Texas, right? The poorest county in the entire state of Texas. It's like near the border. There's all kinds of challenges, which I know to be true. There's an entire week that we spend in Passion and Profit going through and sifting through your demographic area, your, your data. And she did, and she's like, Great, what am I supposed to do with this now, States. right? Yeah. Oh, in the United States, poorest city in the United States. My bad, Megan. <laughs> okay, so she's upset with us, which wasn't the first time she was probably upset with us because we're telling her to do something that makes her feel uncomfortable, right? Hidalgo County, look it up. And she says, I said, you know what? They're there, you just gotta find them. You gotta find the few people that can afford you and you cater to them. So no kidding you, she can tell this story, but one day she decides, she sees in, her, in this poor neighborhood, she sees like a Cadillac Escalade with rims and all this stuff and she goes, I'm gonna follow it. <laughs> so she follows it like a crazy person thinking, Janelle and Eddie said there's money there, you have to look for it. She follows it and it leads her to this gated community and guess what? That's where all of her ideal clients lived. A couple of blocks of them, but they're all there. They got a gated community, they drive Escalades, they got all of the money. She just has to show them that they need her products, right? right? So the great thing about Megan is she sells like vegan products, plant-based products, stuff with allergies because her kids have allergies. Megan has an amazing vocabulary and she was able to articulate the value in why her goods were more expensive and Megan's sales have like gone through the roof. So don't tell me that in your area people don't have money because I've seen it. So anyway, sidebar conversation. Yeah. There's a whole nother video on YouTube that kind of touches on that. However, um, my client, this is my, Megan. My clients are lawyers and doctors and models and yes, they live in the same town. <laughs> And, so, yeah, and, and don't and lie to yourself. Absolutely, and I think that, like, it's important that you open yourself up and you give yourself an opportunity to 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 learn new things, to okay. understand that there are solutions out there for you. You just haven't found it yet. And but the the right, you have to ask yourself the right question. You have to position yourself as a student of business and not someone that, hey, I know it. I've done all those things. I know what you're talking about. I get it. It just doesn't work, right? And when you start to say that. Just understand the position you're putting yourself in. You're giving yourself no way to figure it out. Right. Let me also state for the record that we are in no way raw rawing people to like, go hard, chase your dreams. You can do it. No, maybe you can't do it. <laughs> maybe you can't. Not everybody's built to succeed at the level and at the capacity that they're at right now. Yeah. So maybe you need more training, more tips, more tools, more advice, more guidance, more accountability. I don't know what it is. Maybe you won't succeed. So I don't want our message to be convoluted and like we're not here to give you awesome Pinterest quotes to cheer you on to keep going if you're not able to keep going. Right. I'll give you an example. Uh, we had 
a woman, B Bianca uh, Harris, lives in Bermuda. She owned a sugar cakes, a sugar shack cake bake baking store. It was the only store that supplied um, baked goods oh. in Bermuda, on the island of Bermuda, right? Her rent was crazy. The minimum wage is crazy. She was juggling a full-time job. That was a really good job. She's in human resources. And I was like, this is not a good decision right now. Like, you're getting paid a lot of money at work. I know this is, like, something you want to do. But this, these things don't add up, and it doesn't make sense. So why don't we take a step back, let that lease go, let that stuff go. I mean, we're talking everything. She experiences things, you guys, that are like, I can't, literally, I can't get it on the island of Bermuda, okay? Right. Then we can't carry that, right? Like, there's just things like, why are we fighting this? Let it go. It doesn't make sense. Let's regroup, get out of that lease. And so that's what we advised her to do. Um, there's other people on here. I'm trying to think that uh, Kim, Kim Malam had a bakery yeah. it was she was like working her, her butt off at home she wanted to move forward so before she met us before she came across us she signed a lease on a commercial kitchen she was working her face off she took all of the coaching calls from passion to profit we went through all of the modules around expenses and managing your overhead and what you should be making so here's the thing the simple truth is if you sign up for a certain amount of overhead meaning these are your expenses you signed the lease you signed the rent this is how much it is there's a simple like process now you multiply it by a bunch of numbers this is how much money your business must generate for you to stay in business yeah if it does not it needs to close down period end of story like if you don't have what it takes you don't have the walk-in traffic so in kim's particular situation it was well you have this beautiful kitchen but there is no walk-in traffic. She was in like an industrial. It was store. terrible. Yeah. You're never going to attract all these clients. There's no parking. So in that situation, it's best for you to take some steps back and walk away from that. Yeah. Let that go. Let's regroup. I think that Kim would tell you she's probably happier than she ever has been because it's not a failure. It is a good damn business yeah. decision to say, this is not working. This is not going. So, <laughs> now that I know the formula, yeah. oh my God, I'm never going to be able to hit that with these circumstances. Yeah. And so the point of this is, is when should you quit? You should know when to quit when it's virtually impossible based on the data. And you won't know what the data is unless you give it a shot, right? So what are you looking for? I, I posted this. This is... Like this is what we think our plan is on this on the top line, but this is what reality is. Can't see it. Uh, you gotta can you like that? Like that. Okay. Perfect. So I posted that because it's ups and downs. It's ups and, and downs edges and sharp edges. It's sharp and sharp edges. Turns. And so it's like it, the crazy thing is is that sometimes we are our worst enemy, right? So most of we, the time. We, most of the time. We set a goal, we wanna create this beautiful bakery, we wanna open it up, we wanna have a studio, we wanna do all these things, and it's this perfect line of success. And then we're going and all of a sudden we go, oh my God, this is hard. And we have this dip. And, and then, then we there's think, all this doubt and insecurity yeah, and, and frustration. Does, because all of a sudden that is not in our plans. That wasn't in our visual plans to have these dips and sharp edges and things that happen. And then we start to say, okay, I don't, maybe I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I shouldn't do this. Or, or we start to come up with those other excuses or we come up with the different alternative realities when we say, oh, you know, it won't work in this business. But the reality is, is that if you're able to, I would say, withstand or wait out the hardest parts, then that's when you start to see those peaks. And then the, even in the peaks, you have dips. Yep. And then when you have another peak, you have another dip. The key is your mindset. The key is, can I keep my mind focused on what I want to accomplish? Can I not be so like destroyed when I have a failure? Thomas Edison, it was, it's a really great story, was one of the greatest inventors of all time. And he had this amazing factory that, you know, he was producing all these inventions and all these crazy things. And then one day he was he was at home sleep with his family and a man comes to the door and knocks on the door and says, your factory is on fire. So he leaves his house. He goes to see the factory. And because he had all of these different inventions, all of these gases and all of these different um, solutions started to burst into flames and was creating this amazing, like colorful fire. And he's watching this factory this million dollar factory now mind you this isn't like the early 1900s right 
And all of a sudden he looks and he says, and his wife comes up and he says, go get the kids. They'll never see a fire like this ever before. Ever again. Ever again. And so the kids come out and they look at this amazing and fire. And they're marveled. And they're marveling about the fire. And, he's, and he tells the reporter, he says, at my age, I was looking for something to drive me again. This is a great excuse to get me motivated to do other things and create other solutions. Just so like he that. borrows money from, from Henry Ford, a million dollars, and in six weeks, he's back up and running again in his factory, producing more and more, and makes all his money back. And so the obstacle is the way, right? So I guess I'm here to ask you, like, what do you need? Like, you, some of you go through a fire and you're burnt toast and you're like, I'm out, I'm done. No. Some of you look at fire and go, I'm ready to play. Let's go. I yeah. trained for this, right? And so I will tell you that a good portion of successful people will tell you that you just got to be ready for the fight. And sometimes you got to know when it's right to fight and sometimes when it's not, right? And only you will know. And that should be based on things like, what do I want my life to look like? What do I want to create in my life? If I want to create freedom in my life and I'm working my face off, then this business is not allowing me right. to create freedom the way that I'm doing it right now. The, exactly. the way that the I'm running I'm this business right, right now. now is not allowing me to create freedom. So the way what I'm operating my missing? business right now, my business right now is not producing a profit. I need to change the way. Right. Right. Not <laughs> the business, but the way. Yeah. And in some cases, and it, we've seen this too, that you go through passion or profit and you, you go through the course and you go, I need to pivot. Like the, you know, these folks here are talking about something that has opened my eyes to something I've been really thinking about. And now I want to pursue this and take all that information and apply it to a, a totally different industry. Right. Yeah. And so I think that those are things like the op when I say the obstacle is the way what I'm saying is it's like sometimes the obstacles are pointing you in the right direction and where you need to pivot and change and adjust. But we're too caught up in the emotion of the obstacle to even see it. So I'm going to share this message from Lorraine because she posted it in the group yesterday, but she said, Hey lady, it's been a while. I wanted to reach out. I have some things I wanted to talk to you about, but since I don't have your number, I'll say it here. So she also posted this in the group. Um, I had to step away from passion of profit seven, her session, because my home and marriage was going through a rough patch. It made me question if I could even run a business or bake. She goes on to say that, you know, she realized through the course that it was a huge hobby of hers. Um, and that she didn't want to turn it into a business because she didn't want to attach all of that like responsibility to it. During the time she was going through um, a bunch of stuff at home with her husband, with her kids, with all the stuff, and she just needed to pivot, right? So now she's a single mom. She's got to figure out a way, like how am I going to push forward into the next season of my life? She said, um, I, was, um, I was passionate about something else and that was helping my community through healthcare. So I took what I learned from Passion to Profit and I applied it. Mm. I now have a medical consulting business. I have my first client, I just had my first client pay me $500 for a consultation fee. And we will, he will give me $50 an hour for to audit their documentation, their policies, how to run their practice, she goes on and on. This job will bring in about $5,000 in revenue in the next two weeks. I could not have done this without you. Um, I still think of you as a mentor and do want to meet you in real life one day. I can never repay you and Eddie for what you have imparted into my life. The seeds that you planted will forever produce. That's awesome. I have the chills. I yeah. can cry. The seeds that you planted will forever produce. Do you understand? Like We're not talking to you about cakes. Yeah. This isn't about cakes. Passion and profit isn't about cakes. We've had people that have come in and maybe the woman has um, a, a cake business that she wants to open a bakery for, but her husband had a plumbing business. So we go through, we invite both of them to sit on the calls. Guess what? Maybe we can make more money in the plumbing business. We should do that. Yeah. You should absolutely do that. Our customers, our students say over and over time and time again, now that I have the basic business principles, I could start any business. Yeah. Let me know, those of you that have been through, let me know in the comments. Do you feel like you're equipped now? Now you have the foundational steps to take you know, steps in any direction that you want with any business that you want. Marketing's the same in any business. 
Sales is the same in any business. It's vital. Branding is the same Branding in every business. Branding is equally as important. Ideal if you're selling potato chips, right? And the thing is, is as you grow and you learn more, uh, Megan is over here food blogging like a boss. Like a boss. Right? She found um, a passion that she wants to do. So many of our tribe members are figuring out, like, there are other things that I'm capable of, right? Brittany McDonald, I want to tell you because you're on here now. We were talking about you earlier. Only good stuff, girl. But if you, like, I follow Brittany. I stalk her. One, because I care about her. I want her to succeed. We all slip into a negative mindset sometimes. Sometimes you'll just have one of those weeks. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like, your husband's not on the right, whatever. Your, your relationship feels a little strained. Money's a little tight. Extra bills hit you. Kids got back to school shopping, it was too much. Sometimes you just have a week and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Literally, I, I feel like a failure in everything. You know, we ate fast food all week. Uh, like some of you had that week this week because your kids went back to school. You're not a failure. No. You don't throw in the towel on your life <laughs> because one week was bad. So I follow Brittany because now I'm like, hey girl, What's happening? I see Brittany posting all of this motivational stuff. Guess what? She posts it for her damn self. Yeah. Girl, get it together. She's like constantly telling herself. It's almost like affirmations, but her business is changing, right? She's attracting different clients. She's playing with different things. She's focusing on her children, the things she can uh, control right now. Yeah. And so um, that's what I want to talk to you about. Some of you also are messaging me saying really dumb stuff like you know well i'm interested in passion and profit but i'm not convinced okay what do you want from me do you want me to sell you because i can sell a lot of things right but when you come at me like that i feel like you don't need me to sell you you need to realize first that you're standing in your own way yeah and that is usually what happens with most business owners is we get so caught up in the stories that we're telling ourselves about why we're not being successful that we just want to sit there and sulk and pout and think that we know everything and that we've tried everything, nothing's working, so nothing that you're going to sell me is actually going to help me. Okay? If you want to be right, yeah. you'll be right. And this is why, and here's the thing, you see this everywhere. If a company doesn't do well, they don't close the company. They get rid of the CEO. <laughs> it's just change the owner, you change the outlook, yep. right? And so, obviously, you're not going to get rid of yourselves. In a lot of cases, I know you know, I was talking about who, oh, I I'm did. Gonna, who am I going to fire today. Okay, so but maybe wait, you have me... to fire a piece of yourself and then hire a new there part of go. yourself where your new self says, I'm ready for this. I'm ready to learn. I need I need this knowledge. So I just fired that person that didn't think that there was any options. I didn't. I just fired that person. Could you imagine following someone that thought there was no hope? Could you imagine, like, you know, you, you're down. relying on someone who sees no light at the end of the tunnel. You're relying on someone who is not, that's not tapping into the deep reservoirs of ideas and, and inspiration and looking for information and looking <laughs> for knowledge. You're trying, could you imagine following someone like that? Well, sometimes but that, you don't that know that is your better. customers. Your customers right. are trying to follow you. They're trying to, they're trying to be a part of your journey because they want your products. But if you're not giving them that, then they're not going to show well, up. Well, we spoke yesterday about some of you saying you don't have supportive husbands. I wonder why you're over there crying in river all the time about how you don't have sales and you can't find customers and you're not making money and you're tired and you're working too much. And then he's looking like, yeah, well, could you make some dinner? And by the way, the laundry is piling up. So you're convincing him and taking him on this road that it's this road of doom. Mm. Why would he support you, right? So until you step into something greater, until you change the story in your mind, until you see that there's something better for you, no one else is gonna believe your ass either. So when we first started the business with my partner, uh, we didn't have any money. Yeah. We were struggling financially. And so when you're trying to pay for two households on a business that hasn't quite made any profit yet, that's hard, it's stressful, it's strenuous, right? And I know what that feeling is like, but she didn't have a husband, she didn't have a, a dual income, so I know it was hard. But I remember her having conversations with employees out of frustration, you know, well, it's not like I get paid, I don't have any money. And she wasn't doing it to be malicious, she was doing it because she was frustrated. Yeah. And I remember the employees, like I could see in their faces thinking, 
well, shit, if she's not making right. any money, then my job must be in jeopardy too. And some of you aren't thinking, I have to be the leader of the vision. I have to be the leader of my company, the leader of my employees, the leader of my family. And you're just so stuck in this rut. And so I think that that's what passion and profit you, is for. Can, and I'll let this, because we, we do have to go, but I'll put this out there. So if you're a one-person show, this is why it's so important that you have a vision so if it gives you something to follow, so you get your place yourself in a good state of mind, right? Where you're thinking about how you know, how possible things are, you're thinking about the gratitude, how far you've come, and then you write out this clear vision of what you want, and then you post it somewhere. And then when you're not feeling yourself, you let that be your guide. You let mm -hmm. that be what leads you, because that sometimes is what requ is required. That's why I think we're when you're talking about Brittany Madonna putting up like posts, and sometimes you got to put things in the in the world because it's like note to self, yeah. like <laughs> note to self. I got to remind myself of this. I got to right. remind myself that this is a quick because we're in constant practice, and I think that we're looking for perfect practice. And then when we don't get perfect practice, we think that this is this is the worst this thing in the work. world, and I need to quit. I need to stop doing this. When in reality, you just you just need a different practice. You need to be more consistent with your practice. You need to have a new game plan that helps you understand. Okay, this is how I need to look at this. If I keep this mindset, I can do anything, anything. Yep. So, uh, lastly, uh, before you quit, I want to ask you this. I posted in Passion and Profit uh, two days ago, and I simply asked them one question. Like, you have all the tools, you've learned everything you need to know, but it's a practice. You've got to have some self-accountability. You've got to be able to utilize the, the tools because knowledge is not power. You taking action with the knowledge that has been imparted onto you is actually power. You can know everything. People know how to lose weight. You know how to Google a recipe. You know that you should go to the gym, but you don't do it, right? So knowledge is not power. Action is. So I asked Passion and Profit the other day. It was a simple title. I said, if I were your district manager and I was coming in to audit your business today and I was going to be combing through your receipts, your expenses, your books, your sales, and most importantly, where the hell you're spending your time, what you're doing every day when you wake up, the um, tactics that you're saying that you have in place, the strategies you claim to put in place. If I was your district manager and I came and we had a sit down today based on your performance, would it be a good, per a good conversation or would it be a tough conversation? And you know, most of them said it might be a little tough right now. Okay, why? That's okay. But why? The, yeah. the question's so powerful because you think that leaving your nine to five job is gonna give you all the freedom. I wanna be my own boss. I wanna work hard for my goals and dreams. Guess what? No boss is holding you accountable. No one's sitting you down saying, hey, you know what? We're gonna have to replace you because you didn't hit your budget. Yeah. We're gonna have to replace you because you're not being resourceful. You didn't find all the tools and tactics and strategies. You didn't find anything new. So you knew last month that this wasn't working. I'm gonna replace you with someone else that can figure out how to make it work. Yeah. So sometimes we need a district manager to come in and look at us and scare us straight so that way that accountability pushes you to a new level. Yeah. And so I wanna end this on that. Before you throw in the towel, do a little audit. Do a little quarterly review on yourself, on your business. Really pull back the layers, get deep, and ask yourself, what am I doing on a day-to-day -day basis? If a high-level performance coach was to monitor my every move, and they saw every time you picked up that phone and went on Facebook or scrolled through Instagram, if they saw every time you sat down to watch Netflix when yeah. you knew you should have been working on your business, if they saw every single time you cried and complained about how tired and overworked you were, but saw all the bullshit you wasted time on throughout the day, what would your performance review look like? Mm. Would you be getting written up or would you get a five with a raise? Yeah. Because that's really important. What you do when no one else is watching is really what's important in your business. But what you tell others, what you project, like, I'm so busy, I'm overworked. Are you really? Some of us really are. We yeah. have tons of orders, all of this stuff coming in, all of these things vying for our attention. Your pipes bust, your refrigerator's broke, your oven catches on fire. This happened, by the way. <laughs> um, I get it, those things happen. But for the most part, if you were to 
be coached or be observed for a 24 hour period on how you're behaving and showing up and acting in your business, I just want to know what would your review be? Yeah. So think about that. That's my message for you today. And I want to leave you with this one last point because I see you looking at the clock. Um, <laughs> so Renee posted this yesterday and she said, I saw this on my Facebook memories from the other day. I think it was posted a long time ago. And she said, it instantly made me think of Janelle Copeland and Eddie and our tribe here. I believe this is exactly what they're trying to get us to see, understand, and become. And I loved it so much. It says, maybe the journey isn't so much about becoming anything. Maybe it's about unbecoming everything that isn't Ooh. really you so you can be who you were truly meant to be in the first place. That gives me chills. Girl, that's, that's mic drop. drop. Yeah. So I'm going to post that for you today because it's super important and powerful. Those of you that need me to convince you to join Passion to Profit because guess what? You only have today and tomorrow and then that's it. You can wait four more months to say, mm, maybe I do need it now, but yeah. what's going to be different between now and the next four months? I don't know. What will you do? Yeah. If you're saying you're doing everything you possibly can, maybe you need help. Yep. What will really change? Are you gonna do 120% of what you already like are doing? Yeah. Like That's gonna not gonna the, work. Yeah. That's the definition of working your face off. When <laughs> I'm what gonna you're do the doing the same thing with the same mindset, faster and stronger, and see if I get it. No. It's that going hard doesn't make it easier. It doesn't yeah. make it better. So if you're working at this capacity, this level of knowledge that you have. And just saying, I'm going to hit it hard for the next four months, that's not going to help you. Yeah. You need new ideas. You need new inspiration. You need new tactics, new tools, new tricks, new advice. You need advice. to unbecome. I love that. You need to unbecome all those stories, all those narratives, all those things you tell yourself. You need to strip those things away so that you can see it in a different light, so that you can behave in a different light, so that you can get different outcomes. That's how it all happens. And I'm not saying it's easy. No. But what I'm saying, that is the formula. Yep. But some, but a lot of times you're stuck there and you want to be stuck and you're protecting and we'll talk about this another day, but you create these things to block your true fears, right? You create these, these narratives to, to protect the fact that you are actually scared as hell. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to make a change? Uh, I will dedicate today throughout my day because I got to do some stuff. I'm going to the bakery right now. Um, but what will you dedicate to, like, what do you need to move forward? I'll dedicate my day to receiving Facebook messengers from you, but I want you to hold down the microphone and I want you to tell me, this is what I'm struggling with. And you only get 60 seconds. So I don't need to know the backstory, 20 minutes of how you got there. I just want to know, what are you stuck with today and how can I help you? That's what I need to know. In this, this, don't, this thread? Yeah. Okay. In this thread, you can Facebook message me though. That's fine. Okay. okay. Janelle Copeland. Um, I had one last thing and I forgot what it was. Oh, this is what I have to ask you. Yesterday I did a live in the middle of the work day. And all I did was I had my Archon mount over my cake. I was frosting, we were chatting. And y'all, that video got more views than ever before in Cake Sense. And here's what I want to ask you. Why? Why do you tune in? So many of you asked what kind of buttercream I was using, what I was doing. I get that stuff is fun, it's exciting, that's the stuff that you're passionate about. But if you had a fraction of that passion, like you did about what kind of buttercream I, I was using, if you had a fraction of that passion towards your actual business and the success How, that you could create branding, in your business, yeah. That's what I'm here for. I don't do cake tutorials because you already have baz a bazillion of those, right? But I see that that's still what you want. When we have show off Saturday, everyone wants to show off their stuff. I get it, you're proud, that's what you wanna do. But I wanna show you how to sell the stuff that you're proud of. Right. I wanna show you how to market to the clients that deserve what you're creating for the world. Yeah. I wanna show you how to not work your freaking face off so that you don't have to be watching a tutorial on how to make the perfect buttercream in the middle of your workday, yeah. right? 
So please just do some self-reflecting and say, okay, she's a little bit different. She doesn't really want us to ask those questions. It's not that I don't want you to ask them. I said, I want you to be equally as excited about the business content that we're trying to create for you. So please, if you've invested in a freaking cake class, some of you have gotten on planes and paid $5,000 for these amazing cake instructors to show you how to make cake. Great, let me show you for a fraction of that cost how to sell them. That's it, have a great day. Facebook message me if you have questions about Passion and Profit and how I can help. Um, that's it. I want you to be successful today. Stop telling yourself stupid stories. Don't throw in the towel. You haven't tried everything and I'll talk to you later. Bye.